I'm Amelie and welcome once again to my channel. Today I'm going to be watching Guardian episode 20. And before everything, let me just say, I'm sorry this is coming so late. This thing about only having one computer is absolutely killing me. As I said before, in the past I used to have two computers and I used to use the desktop computer to do the videos and all of that. And now that computer broke and I have to use the only one that I have, which is a notebook. And it's been a little bit of a nightmare because I also work in that computer and editing videos takes a lot of it so whenever I'm editing a video well not obviously editing but whenever I'm converting a video something like that that time I can't do anything else in the computer and sometimes I just need to keep working I need to keep doing a translation or I need to keep planning for my classes so sometimes I just have to prioritize work so it's becoming more difficult to find moments in which I can just dedicate, you know, my time to the computer. I guess, I mean, I also don't want to, I don't know, say, okay, I'm going to leave it at night doing it because I also, this is the only computer that I have. I don't want to ruin it. So, you know, we just have to wait until I get my new computer and then everything would be, you know, we'll go back to, you know, uh, normal, let's say. But for now, we just have to record and do the videos whenever I can. Let's just say it like that. Okay, so let's talk about Guardian. Last episode, we have a lot of great uh, moments. One of my favorite moments, I don't know in the show because there were many moments that I love, but I we had a pretty great moment, which is when Xiao Shun Lan did he use the hallows or did he was about to use them? No, I think he used them because his nose was bleeding or something like that. And Shen Wei got mad. And that whole thing was incredible. Just the barely contained anger of Shen Wei, who at the same time was also worried, but also very, very mad at Zhao Shunlan. That was incredible. Her force, he's forcefully just trying to clean the blood for Xiao Shunlan's nose. Incredible. I love it. Xiao Shunlan's face that whole time, the best thing that I've seen so far. I think that there is a lot to criticize about that, this show. There is a lot of things that, you know, they're not great about this show. But I think I could definitely see why even despite all of that, even despite the special effects, which is something that I honestly, I don't care that much. I make fun of them, but I don't mind it. Um, despite the fact that, you know, things that, you know, there is a lot of technical issues that sometimes the plot is a little bit weird. I just say that despite all of that, I can see why a lot of people still love this show so much because I think the chemistry and, and you know, just the interaction between the two main characters, I, I, I just love them. I just love them. I think once I've seen more of these types of show, I, I have to see, a, I have to do a video ranking like all of the, let's say the main couples in all of the shows that I've seen all of that. And, I can definitely say that these two, they're good. they would rank so high because I just love them so much. I would watch, I, I know this, epi this show has, I don't know, 40 episodes. I would watch 80 episodes. I don't care doing what. I just want to see them. I love this. We also have some cute moments between, well, I don't know if cute, they, were, they thought they were dying, but some interesting moments between Old Chu and Little Guo. I, st I still maintain my position. I know a lot of people uh, prefer to think of Little Guo as a substitute brother for Old Chu, I guess. Somebody told me that in the original novel, maybe there also, there's something, you know, happening there um, and that Old Chu didn't have a brother. So maybe there we don't have an excuse. So maybe they did the brother thing as a way to, I don't know, make it less romantic, I guess, but I still sustain my position. I still think this two, you know, there's something there and I like it. Uh, the big thing about the last episode is that we have um, purple hair guy whose name I still refuse to learn because I don't care. Uh, he was captured. They, they thought of a pretty good way of capturing him. So now 
he is captured, he's in the hands of Xiao Shunlan and Shen Wei. So I think that's, I mean, on the one hand, I'm, as I said, I'm not that, I'm not that into that guy. So I don't know if I'm going to be very interested for what happens, but I hope this gets a resolution somehow, because honestly, that guy, ugh. I hope something exciting happens with him in this episode because I feel like it's episode 20. We have been dragging this guy. Um, in the title of the episode, this is called um, Yesun. Yesun shows up. I am really hoping that Yesun is actually the big boss, the one who's behind Purple Hair Guy, because as I said, I'm just not that into Purple Hair Guy. I'm not a civilian, not as a character in general. I think a much more charismatic actor could have been so maybe could have given a little bit more to the role. But as it is with that actor, I just can't stand him. Maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't make a difference. Maybe the character is just meh. But I I, I just waiting for, for somebody else. I'm just waiting for somebody a little bit more impressive to happen. So I'm hoping that this is him. So um, again, I am watching on YouTube. Uh, somebody told me that the uh, subtitles that are here on YouTube that they are actually fan made, that they came from a time that there weren't a lot of available translations. So these are fan made and that believe me, <laughs> I can tell. Not not in a not in a bad way, but because I don't think any professional translation there are certain mistakes or certain things that a professional translator just wouldn't do. Definitely some of the things that I've seen in these uh in these subtitles they are definitely fall under that category. But again, I feel like when it comes to fun translations, especially fun translations that I believe involve work that was not paid because I believe that these were like work for voluntary uh, people who just wanted to see the show subtitle. Um, I I don't feel comfortable. I, I it, it's look. Sometimes it looks like I'm criticizing the subtitle. I am not. Believe me. If you think that the comments that I made are criticizing, I'm sorry they come out this way. Sometimes they definitely. I I, I will definitely. Sometimes they some reactions just come out, and I don't mean to sound as mean as I do. Maybe especially like look. If they were made for if, if these subtitles were made by professional translators, I wouldn't give a shit because any really you got paid. The least you can do is do things properly. But I don't now, now that I know that I found translations, I don't want to sound too mean to them. But what I want to say, and some people also recommended me watch the show on Viki. And this is also related to that. When I get mad, when I see bad translations, I'm not getting mad at the translator. I know it sounds like that because I say things, but believe me, I am not. I'm not, I'm not mad usually, especially in these cases, and in particular in these two cases that I'm going to mention today. I'm not, I'm not mad at the, at the person because it's obviously somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience and there, there's the mistakes that I make, it's evident that it's people who don't have a lot of experience translating things. So I can't really fault them. Who I can fault is the companies who are doing this. Because what makes me incredibly angry, and the reason why I don't watch things in Biki is because what I can't stand is when these companies exploit the fans to make money which is what's happening if they use this idea of voluntary work or this idea of creating a community so fun works can be shared which is great it is great to share fun works this way but not when the companies are making money. That is something that pisses me off. This channel is making money by the translation, the subtitles that fans made for free. The same as Viki. Viki has programs like 
all of the subtitles from Miki, I find out, they are made by fans, by people who offer their, you know, their, not their services, they offer their time and their work to do the translations. They get benefits, but those benefits are, are nowhere near as close as they should be getting for the translation that they are doing, for the subtitles they are creating. So, what I'm seeing are just companies exploiting fans and creating this idea of a fan community when in fact that is just a cover for them to be able to get money for the translations and that pisses me off so much. So that's why I'm not going to watch things in Biki. I guess it's the same here on YouTube. At this point, I also have a lot of uh, issues with Biki. So... That's where my my support of Biki ends, and also it's super low in my in my country. As many things are, I don't know Argentina. I don't. I feel like we are in a black hole because a lot of things are either block or very very slow. Anyway, uh, I'm not here to support. Well, I guess I'm watching, but you know what? I'm watching with ad block, so I'm sure. I don't know how much they are getting for this. I guess they are getting views. Like I wish I could even change that. Anyway, <laughs> I. Don't think that I get mad. I, I'm I'm a translator. I'm always going to get very emotional when it comes to translating things to to things. I mean, because also translators, we are huge nerds. We can't stop talking about translation. If you know translators, you will know that we can never shut up about this. Like if you're watching a film or watching a movie, there's there's some translation going on. Even if it's in pairs of languages we have no idea about, we are going to have some opinion. We are going to have very strong opinions about it. And this is my strong opinion. And I don't know. I feel that this happens a lot in in this type of media. And I think it's so unfair. It's so unfair for the fans that are having their work just use for profit for companies that are winning millions for them. And on the other hand, it's also unfair for the viewers that are never going to have the experience of watching these shows with translations that are done professionally. I can tell you the difference, how different it is to watch something with subtitles that are made by people who knows what they are doing, how easy it is to understand, how easy it is to follow a subtitle, how easy it is to follow a story, or especially when it's languages that obviously if I'm watching something subtitled in English, it wouldn't affect me because I usually don't read subtitles. But it's such a big difference and it's so frustrating that that is never going to happen, that even Netflix, which sadly, because Netflix is known for being to have some of the shittiest subtitles, it's so sad that at this point, the best subtitles I usually find found on Netflix, and that is, I can tell you how fucked up that is, and it's frustrating because the companies have the money to pay for someone to do the subtitles properly. It's just that they won't because it's a lot cheaper to get your translations for free because they don't care. They don't care about quality. And because so many people are used to watching things like that, they just they just continue to watch them like that. They, they I, don't, I don't know. I guess I don't know what they're missing. And again, this is not a me. Because obviously, again, I don't How many times can I say that I'm a French translator in this? Uh, many times, apparently. This is not me trying to say, oh, these these fan translators, they are taking the job from professional translators. That is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying, because even you can, you can I mean, fan translators work great because especially for genres that need a lot of special knowledge, like these type of shows, they work great. I, and I think I said the same when I was talking about the translation for uh, Modao Sushi, the novel. When you have these genres that are so different to what you have, you had to translate it for a language that comes from, from here, from the, you know, the West. And you have a translator who is very knowledgeable in the genre, who's very knowledgeable on the terminology on how things work in that universe and all of that 
that is invaluable. So I, it's not that I'm thinking that translators, uh, that fan translators have no place in this. Maybe you should, they should be paying an editor to work. Like you have here the fan translation. Okay. So now let's have an editor sit down and maybe improve it. Maybe change things to, you know, whatever they have to change. Maybe create some tutorials for the actual translations to know that there are certain things that you shouldn't do in translators because they make them more difficult to read. Like having incredibly long lines. It's very difficult to read an incredible long line. Just start, you have a second one, you can cut it. Uh, where to cut the subtitle. There are so many things that they could be doing to make this so much easier to read, so much you know, to make it flow so much better. There are times when I'm watching this that, and, and I think that's the worst, that I don't understand what's happening because sometimes subtitles are too fast. Sometimes I read it once and I don't understand what they said because the grammar was weird or the, the word order was weird or the translation was weird. And obviously if I stop and read it a few times, maybe you'll understand it. But who does that? <laughs> When you shouldn't, you shouldn't need to. You should be able to understand things on the first run. Again, I'm sorry I went into a run for this, but I feel that it's it's just something that is unappreciated when I don't know. We could have so much better when it comes to subtitles. And again, this doesn't mean not having fun translations, but maybe companies paying editors to improve on the on the things that maybe a fan translator don't know how what to do. Obviously, uh, different people is going to have different strengths. So maybe try to create something that is quality because it's not that I think that the translations are bad. I have no idea. I can't judge that. I'm, I don't know Chinese. I, I, I know the numbers in Chinese. Obviously, there are certain things that I do notice in translations that bother me. Not in this show in particular, because this show doesn't... I don't think it has that many uh, of that. But for example, I remember when I was watching The Untamed, it did bother me that they changed the way characters address each other. Like they put all of their names, like instead of saying, I don't know, um, uh, I think, uh, for example, Dage or Gogo or things like that, they just change it for their names for some reason or even their title. And it makes things weird because it makes the relationship between characters different. So... Some things I do notice, but most of the time I'm completely ignorant. Like I know some words, I know some grammar, but not at this level. So obviously I can't criticize the translation. But the thing about doing subtitles is that it's so much more than only translation. It requires a lot of knowledge about other things that they they would be so useful for the translate for the people who does the subtitles to know, and it would only take paying someone to do. But obviously, if you're paying an editor, you should also be paying the subtitles. Uh, but you know, maybe that idea is too revolutionary. So again, uh, when I go, I'm going to try to be nicer. But again, if I say something, this is not against the translators. This is all about these guys who are not paying their people as, as they should, essentially. I think I've written enough. I don't even know if I made sense. I, I have the feeling that I, I probably didn't say what I wanted to say because I just went into a rant. And also I haven't had dinner yet. So I think that it makes things worse. Just makes me more mad about things. Maybe more likely to get mad at this. Um, anyway... Please don't, if I make any comments, don't think uh, that I'm making fun of the translator. They they are doing whatever they can. And uh, sometimes there is a certain level of naivety in the, trans the, in the subtitles that I don't know. I think it's charming. Um, and I don't mean that in a condescending way. I mean, like, they didn't know what to do and they did whatever they can. And you have to admire that. And for the same reason that I, right now I'm reading uh, Murao Sushi. I'm not reading the official translation because I just don't have money for it. So I'm still reading the Exile Rebel translations. Um, and I don't criticize. I, the, I, again, especially that one that is a lot closer to the kind of translation that I do. I feel like... I read it and I and I can't help notice things. I can't help saying, mm, okay, here, um, I don't know about this. 
but I will never say anything because this is a translation that just people who are very passionate about that piece of media is something that they are doing just because of that, because they're so passionate that they want to share with other people. And I feel like I criticize that. I, I feel like I have no grounds to criticize that because that is a passion work and a passion job. And I don't know. I feel like I have no right to say anything about that, especially when they are offering it for free. Um, to me, it's the moment where money starts to become involved when I just get angry. So anyway, I'm going to finish this here. As you know, every time that I start talking about this, I just... <laughs> I just can't stop. Let's just go to the episode. Let's see who this Yesun is. Let's see if we can. Um, just you just can't. she just shows up. Let's see who that who this guy is. And also, I'm very proud that I can recognize two numbers in this. I've been practicing numbers lately, um, for some reason. So, um, my Chinese numbers are just on point. Uh, obviously, I know that it's twenty because I. You know, it's the number of the episode, but I also know the symbols, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Okay, let's go to episode 20 of Guardian right now. 